What is up all you sexy nerds? Grizzly McB. And today we're talking about something a bit different on the Nerds New Sexy Entertainment podcast. We want to thank you for listening as well as watching on the many platforms that we uh, have our podcast on. Uh, today I am joined by a couple individuals. First we have... Wildfire One. And Ice Cold 960. And, uh, you know, th- this is a topic that uh, I've brought up a couple times in the past. And it's something that uh, Ice Cold and I have talked about once or twice. And, and what is that topic, Ice Cold? The Artemis Fowl movie. Well, and the book. We'll and and the book, so yeah, but more so the movie and how we hoped it would have been. Okay. And how it actually came out. I watched mm-hmm. it last night. Like these, these guys were telling me, "Okay, we're, we're going to do this one." Well, so I'll watch it. And I watched it last night, and it was interesting. But I'll let you, you gentlemen, know much more about the book than I do. So I'll let you guys kind of begin this. Show us, show me the way. You do not know the way. Okay. <laughs> so, so do you want to start this, uh, Grizz? <laughs> um, no, by, like, by all you, means, you wanna, go like, ahead. Okay. So let me get started on the books. In the books. You learn that Artemis Fowl, uh, that his father, Artemis Fowl Sr., has gone missing on the, what was it, the Artemis Star or something for the boat? Oh, I can't remember exactly the name. A boat. Yeah. It, he, it, 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 his, his major freight liner. Yeah, but regardless, he got lost on the boat and they couldn't find him. Artemis Fowl was trying to find, you know, Junior was trying to find any way possible to find his dad. But ultimately, he couldn't. And that's basically the premise of, you know, the first book. The movie brings his father back, which aggravates a living Whoa. shit out of yeah. me. We'll get into that. Hold on. The movie talked about that. That basically, you said the whole book was the first two seconds of the movie, where it's like, oh, he yeah. went missing, and, yeah. and it's on this boat, and it, you literally yeah. hear that on the news for like two seconds. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, so, uh, so I was, I was like, okay, I was like, okay, he's he's missing in the movie too. Okay, that's at least somewhat accurate. No, they. Mm, you go, guys. <laughs> yeah. So so in the books, um, his freight liner goes missing somewhere in what is it like the Baltic Sea, North China Sea, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, he finds out. I want to say it was book two, or the end of book one that his father was possibly being held captive somewhere in the Arctics of Serbia. So the phone call um, between between the 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 junior and the the main bad guy didn't happen at all. Uh, not until like book 3, I believe. Oh, they're, they're like we got your dad. End. The very tail end yeah. of book. Two. Yeah. And but so, it, and, that, and it wasn't no, that wasn't much detail about it. I've got your yeah, dad. So, so give me this, that, d- and the other thing. During the books, yeah. or in, in the book series, it does talk about how Artemis Fowl Senior is like the kingpin of this galactic underground thing. Yeah, galactic underground criminal organization. Um, it mentions a few times that he's wanted in like twenty something different countries for. Um, robberies of precious artifacts and stuff like that um but it's not until the last book that it's brought to light to artemis fowl jr that this whole time his father had been working with um the lep recon with the elf police, yeah. Yeah, with with the leprechaun. The leprechaun. I thought that the was leprechaun. yeah. Lep recon. Recon. I thought I uh, thought that was a good play on words. And and I'm glad that they put that in the movie. What what really threw me like kind of upset me about the movie compared to the book is you know Butler his bodyguard. Oh my God! Yes. When when you. Th- when you read the book, you picture someone like Bill Goldberg. Oh, okay. Just this massive heap of someone, man. He's literally a heap of man meat. 
Yeah, they, and, and it, it like, like describes him of, uh, yeah, like muscle upon muscle of just U.S. Army Ranger badass. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He, he was a military veteran who, you know, had the scars from a war and was just extremely intimidating okay, and nobody get, screwed with him. I get where you're going. Okay. This guy okay. was kind of like and the then, lovable badass kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah, so then his younger sister, who was brought in, I don't know, book late book three, early book, book four. Three, yeah. 20 minutes into the movie. Was yeah. supposed oh. to be, you know, like, in her early 20s. Um, no, not some teen. Did, no, she wasn't a tween. You know, she like, was a tween. Yeah, no, like, she, she was... Okay, in the book, Butler's younger sister... Who he brought in to help after he got hurt? Yeah. Um, fighting trolls. See, that's mm-hmm. that's where I'm like, why did he bring her in if he had all this training? I was wondering about that in the movie. Yeah, no, no. So in the book, he got like hurt bad, like had to be hospitalized, um, and he would have died had it not been for, you know, the little little fairy lady. I can't even think of her name right now. Um, oh, is her name like something small or some shit like that? Oh, uh, no. Um, Officer Short. Short. Yeah, Officer Holly, Short. Holly, Holly Short. Holly Short, yeah. So if it wasn't for her using her magical powers, Butler would have, would have died. And that that's um, what they did in the movie. They did do that in the movie. And, and that is how um, Artemis Fowl and her became friends because she didn't want a human to die. So she healed Butler and Artemis Jr. and her came to this pretty much unspoken agreement. Hey, we're on the same side. We want the same thing. Let's mm-hmm. work together and get things done. That happened way and too quickly she, in the movie, in my opinion. Like, yeah. Like, let, let me explain. They, he, he kidnapped her, right? <laughs> and then like two seconds later, they're like, we're friends. No! We're, we're, we're all buddy-buddy. No, we're we're going to work together. It no! It, it, was, it happened he, so quickly in the movie that I had yeah. no interest. Like, I the movie was... Uh, I'll just... I'll put it this way. The movie was entertaining, but it wasn't like... I, I Like I told you guys off podcast... It wasn't podcast, realistic? Well, real... real dude, realism has nothing to do with this. It's... it's the, the, Even then, like, I think a little Wildfire one, like... Me as a kid would have loved the movie because it did. It went, but through it went through the story quickly. And then, but as an mm-hmm. adult, I could, I didn't really care for the characters. I didn't really because I never got to know the characters. They're just like, yeah, this is so and so. There they are. That's their name. Yeah, the the, the way they fucking showed Foley. Okay, there's yeah. no so, there's no information about him. Yeah. So he's a smart centaur. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the the way the book describes Foley. Is okay. Think of the guy that plays Hagrid from Harry Potter. Yeah, but in horse but form. as a centaur. As a centaur. centaur. But and, as a centaur. And okay, and then think of um, Mulch Diggums, right? <laughs> the guy that can unhinge his jaw and yeah, eat through earth and everything. That was okay, the way that, he calls himself the tall dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The way that the books describe him is because I was reading the books as I was watching the Harry Potter series when it was coming out. The way that the book describes Mulch Diggums is kind of like Mun, um, Mundingus Fletcher, the real, like, dirt baggy guy that breaks into um, Sirius Black's house and steals the locket. Okay. I think they got him okay from what you're explaining as far as, like, the actor to play him. And at first, I'm not going to lie, I thought that was fucking Jack Black. It wasn't him. It wasn't Jack no. Black. No. At first, I'm like, is that no. him? It but, sounds like him. It looks like him. And then I, I went through the, the credits. It's another fella who, who's done movie. Yeah. I think they did an okay job as far as he goes, but, I mean, I haven't read the books. Well, and then see, like, the um, the leader of um, the LEP Recon. Oh, the old the, lady? The lady. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't get me started in, on that. In the, in the books, I shit you not, you can ask the ice cold, it describes... Um, Fuck, what is his name? Um, the guy that played Hellboy. Oh, Ron uh, Perlman. 
It, it described yeah. fucking Ron Perlman to a T, cigar and all. Huh. And then they make it a girl. I'm Making like, an old lady. fucking really? So, you see, it's not just that fact that they made it a girl. The So, Commander Root in the book had the nickname Beetroot. Because when he got pissed, he turned he beat red the shit like out of a somebody. beet. <laughs> yeah, and like break he, shit. He beat the shit out of something. The fucking they made Holly Short's dad in the movie beat root, which pisses me the fuck off. Yeah. Like so. yeah, you know, you know, I'm all fine for them trying something, but at least make you know Commander Root still very pissed. So and... they fucked the lore up. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. And um, from what I remember from the books, the LEP recon when they went to Artemis Fowl's house sent a team, a team, not a the whole team, fucking squad, not the entire department. Yeah, that was, I thought that was a bit much. Like, when it, I mean, they they got down the part of Holly Short being kidnapped, but she was kidnapped during that fight okay. because mm-hmm. Artemis Fowl pretty went out, pretty much went out and was like, oh hey, check out this cool fairy fucking up shit. Huh, poo poo. Hey, you guys are fucked. I'm gonna go ahead and take her. So I th- yeah. see. I and thought then, I thought that was off. kind of bullshit. Like after that, after the scene in the movie where she she got done with that ogre or whatever the fuck that thing was. Uh, the she troll. Just, yeah, the troll. She's heading well, back and just out of nowhere, she's like, "Nope, turn it away." And then she, yeah, just where she like, went to sightsee. And- well, no, she went to. She had to go prove everything wrong about her dad. Like. I thought that yeah, was just yeah. that, that was just stupid plot and, and device see, timing. That that's that that's the thing in um, in the movie, Beetroot, Holly Short's dad, was the one that was helping um, Artemis Fowl Senior. Mm-hmm. Okay, in the books, Holly Short is the one that was helping out Artemis Fowl Senior. Oh. Yeah. What's and this? that is in she, she in the books, she had to make sure that she the first few books she was doing her best to make sure that Artemis Fowl Jr. did not know that her father had anything to do with the fairy world. Oh, I see. And once she was sure enough that he could be trusted with the secrets of the fairy world and that they were pretty much same set of mind of what needed to be done to protect both worlds is when she's like okay we're on the same side let's work together yeah mm-hmm so uh so i'm taking it neither one of you guys liked the artemis fell movie <sighs> it was good to a point it looked cool but mm. i mean I- you know, while I've been talking about them turning these freaking books into movies for years. Yeah, you were excited Literally about it. Years. I mean, you even compared me and to the centaur at one in one podcast. Yeah, and the kid that played Artemis Fowl. I don't think they could have picked. I, I don't think they could have picked picked somebody better. Yeah, he did. He a did a fantastic job. Um, the lady that played Holly Short, fantastic job. Everything else, a complete fuck up. Oh, <laughs> a man. complete God. fuck up. That Colin Farrell did a fantastic job as the father, but in the mm-hmm. book, it kind of describes someone like um, Sean Connery almost. Yeah, I was about to say. I always uh, when when they first started talking <laughs> about him, I always kind of picked a like in my head. I env- envisioned like a 007 kind of dude. You know, like it's funny that you mentioned. Yeah, no, Sean I, I it, like it, it, you read the books. It describes someone older of class um just that gangster mentality and you know immediately i was like okay it's like irish scottish it's got to be like fucking sean connery uh but i mean cast colin farrell is on point yeah i mean because he's done so many gangster movies and he's done a fantastic job i think he did a great job okay so everyone else sucked. Think well, it's a- not that everybody else sucked. It's that the script that was given for them sucked. Sucked. Yeah, okay. I, I and, it was a bad and, rewrite. In, in my opinion, somebody who's been a fan of the Artemis Fowl series for ever since it came out, a decade and a half since it came out, um, 
really disappointed in their selection for the characters. Oh, definitely. For the cast. Okay. Do you have anything to add Very to that, Ice Cold? It just, you know, going back on the Butler thing, it's Butler and his sister in the movie, I can't remember if they said that she was his cousin. Right? I think I heard niece or niece. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Uh, but niece. I thought, yeah, I it thought that was a weird thing. Sister. Yeah. So, okay, when you guys started saying sister, I was trying to think back. I was like, I think that it was supposed to be a niece or something. And yeah, so I thought I, I, maybe I, I missed her. Niece. So they fucked that up, too. Oh, yeah. heavily, yes. But, and, and also, and like I said, she was supposed to be in her, her and if early I remember to correctly, mid-20s. The, was it the first or the third book where they were, like, in some some different city where there's, like, the cafe and the guy drinking tea? Mm. Is that the third book? No, yeah, that book. I, 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 I think it was the third book. Cause it was right before the sister got brought in, and I believe they were like someplace in like Italy or Spain or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. They're See, trying to track down uh, lead on uh, Artemis Fowl Senior. People yeah. might hate me for this, but I think the like I th- like I said, Younger Wild would love it. But I honestly, as an adult, like I watched it, the movie was boring. The lore was weak. The uh, like Artemis Fowl himself, the younger the Wild junior, would love the books. Yeah, well, I, I probably it, love yeah. the books now. Well, no, he, he, he'll love the books now. Um, I mean, it, it's an easy read. Um, what I liked about the books is remember if it's the top of each page or the bottom of each page. Well, it's the bottom where it's encrypted message in the Elvish. Yes, and in, in the last book on the last page, you get the inscript. You get the um, the code the decoder. Yeah. to be oh. able to d- decode it. And it's like a whole nother story once you decode it. It That's is. cool as fuck. Um, about the lore of um, fairy kind and um, and their rules. And, and their rules and decoding the last book you find out that um, the foul family line has been working with uh, fairy kind in secret for well Ten since generations. Fairy, since fairy kind went into hiding okay mm-hmm. helping protect fairy kind and their artifacts and so on also is it the third book or the first two books where basically you're, you're we're also trying to get figure out how to cure Artemis's mother uh, it's the the second book I believe. Yeah, they did not mention anything about her. She is suffering from some sort of ailment. Um, Almost like dementia. That is, um, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Ice Cold, was a curse from one of the uh, fairy kind items that Artemis yes. Sal Sr. had brought home. Yes. And it wasn't until, I want to say roughly end of the fourth book beginning of the fifth book that fully figures out how to found kill. out about Artemis's mother and just you know did his computer wizard stuff and uh, like the whole f- I say a good half of the book every time he's getting called to do one thing or another he, I mean you can just picture it in your head he's wanting to say hey fuck off i'm trying to save this lady mm-hmm. exactly um, yeah he, he he can tell he's getting <coughs> frustrated, frustrated. Uh, i mean he even starts yelling at people for no reason and you don't understand why until he's like i've been working for the past six months on trying to find a cure and here it is i noticed in the movie like and this is probably one of the things that really bored me if anything was uh, uh, Artemis Fowl Jr. didn't leave the house most of the time. Yeah. Like, most yeah, of it was just In the just book, there. the only time he was at home um, was uh, pretty much to build new tech. Mm-hmm. That, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, there were points where he did leave the house that showed him in school and shit, but it really didn't show that other than that, like, other than the introduction, most of the movie was just him at the house, and... That just uh-huh. seemed extremely boring to me. Like I, I just couldn't get into it. Even when they attacked the house, I was like, "Oh, oh, well, that's fucking, that's convenient for him, I guess." It just yeah. seemed very slow, slow paced. 
Um, I, there wasn't enough lore behind the characters. I just couldn't get into it. Like, you know, read the books and you'll get all the lore in the world. Oh my I, god! I was it's, it is really disappointed world. with with how they portrayed the lore and how they actually introduced a lot of the characters. It was now. When did yeah. this movie come out? Uh, it came out f- literally a few months ago. Oh, so it, yeah. it came out literally for Disney because of the COVID thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. yes. So it was originally um, going to have a theatrical release, but then COVID. Okay. Well, that makes all and, sorts and of sense then. The, the whole thing of um, Mulch Diggums going to prison and that whole fiasco, yeah, it never happened. Mm-hmm. It was oh, just in the so end? Going to prison. The end when he was doing... And the thing is, like, they keep talking about how smart Artemis Fowl Jr. is. He's supposed to be this intelligent. I didn't see that. He's a genius. Yeah, I no, didn't they see didn't that. really show it. Like, all One I saw I was... like is how they showed him literally being smart to the therapist. That was about yeah, it. That, yes. that was in it. a book, in a book, he went through a lot of therapists. Well, just about every session he had to go to, um, the therapist would run out crying. Oh, wow. It portrayed him as an intelligent person, and, like, the movie you could see tried to do that but it failed in my opinion like yeah the fact, it did the fact yeah. that he just uh, he, he goes up to he goes up to the fairy that he captured he goes up to holly short and he's like i trust you and just takes his shit off that's not fucking yeah, no, smart no, it, it, it that was a long time coming in the books but in the movie it, it made him look like that was like his childishness like his 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 mm-hmm. his like his like he was immature it was him thank you like he was immature and he just wanted shit to go his way you know and another thing like how he how they portrayed him with the death of uh of the butler of butler uh, i like he he's all about like all oh, my plans always work well that plan didn't fucking work no oh, it did yeah and no that, and that, in the books he makes his plans work yes mm-hmm. regardless even if he's got to jump in front of a bullet he makes his plan and, work well the whole thing was like the whole time they're running from that ogre or whatever the fuck I what I keep calling troll. it troll troll thank you troll. they're running from that troll fucking hungry troll that they pissed off and threw in the house and he's he, it's almost like there's no plan there they're just like okay well we're gonna improvise and not even improvise we're just gonna run for our lives if he was truly the genius that in the movie if he's truly the genius that they're they're saying he is he'd have had a plan like five plans by then. And in the book, he did. In the book, <laughs> I'm assuming he did. Yes, but in the movie, it, the the portrayal of 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 that genius just went out the window. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's you know at the end he's like I'm a I'm a at the very end like his last line to that fucking devil creature thing that was on the phone with him was uh, I'm a I'm a evil genius or some shit like that. Yeah, some, yeah was, was that something his character dumb. would say? No, he. Wouldn't I thought have that to was dumb. That. I thought that was stupid. I thought that was like. That was like something to get the kids' attention. Get you know people, kids watching yeah. it. Like they, you, okay. And this is a Disney product, right? We're probably getting sued if. Yeah. But here we go. This is where this is gonna Fuck get. Fuck them. So Disney, look, we get you. We get that like it works with some of your some of your IPs or whatnot out there that you change shit a little bit and it works. That's great. Like fucking, we love Marvel. We do. And what you do with it is cute. And it's great. You know, you sometimes you piss uh, you piss some of us off changing stuff. To a, to a more theatrical degree. But when it comes to a book and you're writing a book for, or you're, you're making a movie out of a book written for people like young and old, for fans, don't fuck that up. Yeah, you already fucked up Star Wars and fucking. Yeah, you already took Jurassic half the shit we love. Park and fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. You took half the shit we loved and fucked it up. Like, if you're gonna, mm-hmm. if you're gonna grab something like this, love it. Caress it. Yeah. Jerk it off. Make it feel good. Make it good for the people watching. <laughs> this is O face. Make it good for the people watching. Make it like fun. Like if if you're worried about being boring, then make the three movies. You did how many movies for Pirates of the Caribbean, which most of them sucked? All of them. But you can't you made three movies for the new Star Wars movies and those ones fucking sucked. But you can't take the time off for a a, a beloved <laughs> Look at fucking Grizz. A beloved fucking uh, book series that's... How many books are in these series? Seven, eight. And you put seven, seven movies... Seven books into one goddamn movie. In rant. You guys fucked up. 
You fucked you know, up. It was more. It was more like two, maybe one and a half books in the movie. Still, that's, that's a lot of information. How am I going to get into the character if I don't really know the character? Like they put the first two two books and the last two books into one movie. And that's where you fucked up, Disney. That, that's why you Artemis Fowl is probably a flop. Up, Disney. You're you done up. fucked up. Yeah, that's why Artemis Fowl is probably a flop. You. So the movie, let's as far as the movie goes, well, actually, fuck it. First, the books. What are your guys' What are your guys' uh, ratings on the books? Books, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Okay, there you go. Hit me with the movie. Two. Four. Eight. I haven't read it. And uh, so I'll give it a five. But it, the movie was entertaining, but it wasn't like anything good. I, it's like, in my opinion, it ranks right up there with like the Never Any Story two. Mm-hmm. They did a two. Yeah, and it yeah. wasn't very good. Huh. So it was. It's eh. Like you want to shut yeah, your and kid up? Yeah. Apparently, Disney is supposed to be doing a Goonies two. You fucked that up. Fuck you, Disney. Don't fuck up the Goonies two. That's all I'm gonna say. Just don't. Like, if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. Exactly. Guys, Disney, stop fucking shit up. Just stop. Please, like, please stop. We, you guys Get have done. Help. You guys have <laughs> done some magical shit, guys. Like you guys have done some stuff that just blows our mind. We love, we love some of the stuff you touch is gold. Other times, mm-hmm. it just turns into a flaming pile of dog shit. <laughs> Point in case, Artemis Fowl. And I, I yeah. get it. Not everything can be magical. Not everything, you know. You can't have the same writer on everything, and you can't have the same director on everything. But you know, a great example of bad was uh, Episode Eight, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. That you don't. That was probably your lowest. Disney, you see, I'm dead inside because of that fucking movie. Dun, 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 dun. So the the movie the movie wasn't you know Artemis Fowl eh it was okay like honestly I think it's one of those movies you put your kid in front of you let them watch it and you hope they stay the fuck quiet but that's about it I think that's what it's good for um I'm interested in the books because of these two but read the books you'll you'll fucking yeah, love them you will love them portray the anger I, if they if they do decide to do another one I hope to you know I, I hope to Walt Disney they do it right. Yeah, they they can't do another one. Well, they yeah, they they literally did the last two books, like you were saying. They they no, they, they did the first two. They brought Artemis Fowl Senior back. You can't do another one. Well, I mean, according to the movie, they're going to go against that fucking demon creature thing that was fucking that got him to begin with. So, I'd like to and, see and what they happens. don't. You don't even explain who the fuck that yeah, is. Yeah, who? Tell me, guys, who the fuck is that? Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Just fucking tell me. Her name is Opal. She's yeah, they said her name. Elf. She's a what? A lesbian She's elf? Supposed to be dead. Supposed to be dead. Oh. Supposed to be dead oh. for a thousand years. Why? Yeah. Who? What? Where? Why? Eh. An e- evil. Um. Was it evil fairy sorceress? Yeah, pretty much. That was killed by. The fairy king, the fairies, as well as the humans working together, the last time, last time the two sh- shared the earth before yeah. the fairies went underground. Okay. Yeah. No, that there you go. I guess. I mean, they could have. If they skipped ahead, they could have. That's more lore that just got fucking forgot about. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I would have been more interested. Like, I don't even know who the bad guy is. There's no reason. Like, he's like, I'm well, going to take even you find for out this. about her until the end of book three. Uh, mm-hmm. I just, she just took, like, I'm going to take your dad for no reason. You know, I mean, there was a reason. They wanted that fucking egg thing, whatever that, that thing was called, the butt plug of justice. But uh, And that didn't even come up until <laughs> book four. <laughs> no, what? Four, yeah. what I, it, they made it like it was the ultimate magical artifact, but what the fuck is that thing? Basically, it, it is like it is the ultimate at magic artifact. Yeah, but they never explained like where would it come from. Why is it there? Why is everyone so fucking afraid of it? Why is it gotta be locked away? It's basically the cornerstone of the magical society. Well, they just gave they gave this really bad explanation. Like it's in a good in like real generic. In good hands, it can do good, but in evil hands, it'll do evil. It was bad. Okay, so it, it it's pretty much the the fucking cube from. 
uh, Avengers. Okay, so it's a it's a fucking okay, it's a tesseract. Pretty much. Oh, I would have loved to know this stuff. Like, it would have been good to know this. It's just imagine if that came out in theaters, how pissed you would be. Yeah. Because I know you, I know Grizzly, I, I, I think Ice Cold would see it too, but I, I know Grizzly would be the first one in fucking line. He's been waiting for that movie for a long time. I've been waiting mm-hmm. for that fucker for over a decade. And then, oh, I would I would have walked out of that bitch pissed off. It would have been, it'd have been the fucking episode, episode eight all over for me. Mm-hmm. Right. If I was like that. Oh, my God. Man, this... We're, we try not to be negative, too negative here at Nerds the New Sexy, but unfortunately this movie was... Fucked. Yeah. Watch it, guys. Give us what you think. Let us know what you think, because... I mean, I'd like to know if there's things I might have missed. Like, I'm pretty sure there was really little to no lore in this movie. There was very little. I mean, I'd say maybe... Two, three percent of the lore. It's talking about like, like mythical creatures, and I love that shit. And I actually had mm-hmm. to force myself to watch it. Like the first yeah, ten no, minutes, like I was bored. Unlike in the movie, how Artemis Fowl has to figure all this out once his dad goes missing. In the books, Artemis Fowl was the one that f- figured out about the fairy kind without his dad ever saying a thing. Yeah, exactly. Without without the little fucking nursery rhyme. Yeah, I was. I thought that was was, weird. He was perusing the internet and came across this article about some crazy lady seeing a goblin or troll or some shit, and he's like, "Huh, that's real." That would have been more interesting. Internet server. He had his own internet server. He had his own search browser. Like he was hacking into government. A website, like, and and nobody knew. He was like the ultimate hacker, the he, ultimate nerd, the so ultimate. So he was smart as fuck. Badass. And they did. They they really dumbed that down. Unfortunately. Yes. Yes. So. I mean, okay, like like the glasses that he was wearing, that he took off to show his trust to, um, Holly, Holly. Short. It, yeah. No. Uh. His, his dad didn't make those. He made those. Mm-hmm. Um, his his dad was pretty much an errand boy for the LEP recon. Okay. To go and steal these art these artifacts, um, and keep them safe. That I did get. He kind was of. he was Artemis Senior was the criminal mastermind behind all the robberies. Okay. Artemis Fowl was the technical mastermind behind all of the technology. Okay. Um, I mean, he even hacked into the. Um, the database that Foley made and was the only one that had access to um, Artemis Jr. was the one that hacked that in the underground server system for the Fairy King Fairy World and was pretty much saying, hey Foley, you're a joke. <laughs> you're gonna let this yeah, human he boy... Yeah, literally you know, poking fun at him a few times. Yeah, yeah. And that's how him and Foley became friends because it was pretty much like super nerd against super nerd. Okay, who's going to screw with the next person first? That was... Mm-hmm. See, I would have loved to seen that. And, and that never came up. Yeah, ever. <sighs> read the book before you watch the movie. That way you're disappointed Please, too. yeah. Or just read the book and don't watch the movie. And it's, it's rare that we get so negative. Because you better believe we will bitch about it. Oh, yeah. Well, if, if it's something we don't like or something we have love for and they fuck it up, of course. With that said and done, guys, I think we'll go ahead and end the podcast. We thank you for watching. We thank mm-hmm. you for listening. Uh, Grizzly, you know that there's a number we should probably tell them about, and we haven't told them in a while. Fuck. Okay, that number to give us a call, leave a message, because we're not going to answer, because it's an answering service. Uh, but give us a call anyways. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Any ideas for podcasts? Any ideas for videos? Any games you want us to play or review or anything at all? Just to call and say hi or call and anyway. give us crap, because you have no soul there's a number for you to call and that number is 559-997-6803 again that number is 559-997-6803 that is nerd is a new sexy entertainment answering service 
Exactly. And it is open 24-7 for you to leave a message. And that's and why... Unless to eventually get to if you leave a message. Yes. We'll even bring your name up and tell you it was, tell everyone it was your idea. If you leave a message. If you leave a message. Mm-hmm. Guys, we'll see you next week on uh, episode... What? 133? 133. 133. 133. Yeah. yeah. Who knows what we'll talk I can, about. I can next number. Week. I can math. With that, guys, we want you to stay nerdy. And stay sexy. Always.